Welcome everybody. Go ahead and get comfortable. We've got a long night of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 action. It's the Friday night. That means it's your weekly dose of the UMVC3 TNS Weekly. I'm live, and my boy is live. I think 10 years we've known each other, my friend. Uh, welcome to the stream tonight. I'm, I'm just so excited to be here with my man, the one and only KP, live at Tampa Never Sleeps, number two. <laughs> you know, they always make a sequel, sequel to a great thing. Should be pretty interesting. Um, up first, I think we've got, oh my God, it's Nick Man. Nick Bad, I saw Nick Bad in the chat earlier. What's up? Uh, versus SMG Precision. I love Trish. So, you know, we're winning right off the top. It's a dub. Dub match. Absolutely. And I don't know why Nick Bad has bad in his name. Maybe it's like Michael Jackson bad because he's pretty good. I've seen Nick Bad do yeah, the same things. But SMG Precision with the Trish. Trish is a very interesting character because she kind of denies gameplay in the same way that Modoc does. But... You have to capitalize if you're Nick Bad. If you get the, the rare hit against a very elusive Trish, you have to make the most out of it. And it seems that the scramble right after has paid off. Uh, Trish might DHC safely here into Doom, but getting hit right there might trigger a Santa Claus situation through the chimney. KP, how do you feel that this match is going now that Nick Bad has no X Factor and couldn't get away with getting rid of Trish? Trish versus Captain America is a matchup that we really don't see much, but obviously we know Cap's reputation for blowing up zoners in really explosive patterns. So it's someone that she has to take shots at in big bursts. So I think he did a good job, even though the X Factor was spent and Trish wasn't killed. Um, in the follow-up sequence here, we do get a kill on Doctor Doom and mix-up opportunity with Deadpool. Oh, a little bit of a scuff, so we don't get the full mix-up. Um, mustard pie, hello, thirty dollars into the match you know right now are you serious man thank this you is so why much. i believe mustard is the best condiment out of the usually oh, free. found ones in in the united states of america is probably my favorite so shout outs to mustard pie and shout outs to this extension right here with the round trip going to be more than enough to get rid of deadpool and now tagging in the magneto for the mix-up with the low voltage a lot of trish players opt to use peekaboo but this time the low voltage kind of Giving that Taskmaster energy, you know, where you can just kind of follow <laughs> your position. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Pretty much everything about Trish, including her assist game, is weird. That's like, that's probably something that excites people about Trish. They get into this character because she's very precise and has to be, you know, so finicky with a lot of things. But that assist right there is actually pretty strong. It's kind of like a wall of a projectile. It hits at a really weird timing. So it, it is one of her more synergistic tools. Yo! Okay, Strider got the hit, but it didn't matter because Trish just fell an X Factor in one game. And then this matchup just has had more plot twists than M. Night Shyamalan or a recent Pixar movie. Like, this is absolutely <laughs> insane. Uh, maybe the enemy was, was Nick Bad all along. Baby. He was his it's own bad guy. Baby. Oh, I love his extension, by the way. The Max Green Vajra, uh, Captain America confirmed. You might look at Nick Bad's team, and as far as Captain America teams go, it's kind of weird. Uh, but shout out to Eli Curry, who also just play uh, Cap Strider. It's a it's a team that can play with a lot of synergy. Oh, look at that! Ooh. He just it just feels like this Captain America is just inventing confirms resets everywhere. Nick Bad is being so erratic, but sometimes that's a good thing. If you don't know what exactly you're gonna go for and you just wing it, your opponent is not gonna know either. And we're about to find out what sort of mix we have here. Oh, that. That Vajra hit right there, but not enough of a confirm. This is an opportunity for Precision to get a punish and perhaps tag in Magneto for an extension or, or just a mix-up. Goes for the TAC instead, not afraid to drop the combo. And now I'm wondering, KP, do you snap the Strider or do you just fight it in this order? Because there is such a strong meaty game from the Trish round trip setups that sometimes anchors don't really matter. Yeah. The resources are pretty low, so I'm feeling like if we get a hit on Deadpool and we don't want to snap, we'll probably pop an X. Great timing on the teleport there, actually gets through the, the projectile spam. Magneto trying to get over top of this this nonsense. Usually, you know, this is a place where Magneto dominates, but with the Vajra assist combined with all the Deadpool zoning tools, it's actually pretty annoying. Oh, he gets the, te he gets the teleport reset. And, and that's safe? important because a, a lot of characters can't punish it. If you don't have an OTG, what can you do about it? 
And Nickbat going for the, the chip there. Very interesting option. Maybe trying to force an X Factor. Knows that the gun chip is safe. Goes for the anti air slide. Shades of DJ right there. Street Fighter 6. Oh, mix. oh my goodness. And that overhead might as well be unblockable when it crosses Bruh. you up. It's crazy, Dude. KP. And we have a 1 1 scenario. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> Shout out to Kevin. Who told me. He was like, yeah, man. The overhead only hits cross up if you were crouching. So you were going to get hit anyway. And I was like, I hate you, man. I hate you. You know what I do? When when I sense an overhead, I just mash. Sometimes offense <laughs> is the best defense, and this is what both of our players are proposing right now. Going for the aggressive option after the block string. Missiles tagging in here, and Ooh. you know what? Against Captain America, it's a particular matchup where I like beam assist a little bit more because you can kind of force a jump, and that's when Cap is at his weakest. There's no charging star, but if you jump too much, then you get caught like that, and this should be a dead Trish here, KP. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate too because we've seen what the Trish can bring as far as like a damage and setup engine for this team. Oh baby, Nick Bag going for the optimal stuff. I like it. I mean optimal as far as Cap can be concerned, you know what I'm saying? That was pretty optimal. Uh, a lot of people have different versions of the relaunch. Some do a double uh, shield slash, some just yep. dash back and OPG. So I like to see the spice and Dr. Doom and chip range right here, but smartly DHC's out and might get the hit, but nah. this could be the wrong DHC. No punish, it's pretty safe. But decides to go for the neutral. And I don't and might oh. hide him in the bag. You can't just call a bleeding assist like that and Magneto gets the hit but doesn't confirm. You have to believe in yourself in this scenario, KP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No no no. Magneto anchor is, is meta now. We've seen it. We've seen it. We know that it's legit. Precision's about to show us this was the plan. Yes. Ooh. Open them up. Finish it and mix up. No! Oh. We didn't get the finishing part! I think that might have been on you. If you did, if you said anything else, that was a completed combo. But with great power comes great responsibility. We have to er uh, learn this early on in the bracket because commentators cursing sometimes seals the fate of the tournament. We're looking at a 2-1 here for Nick Bad Precision. Did have an opportunity to come back, but we're going to have to wait and see what other patient we have on the table. Oh, I like what Nick Bad's doing to the vertical space there, but Precision waits. No, they found their opportunity to turn things around, but just a uh, drop, a simple drop, gives Nick Bad an easy confirm here. It's one bar, and I dupe, yep, Strider just sits up, so we're going to get a dirty mix up. Dirty bird! Oh my god. That was the yeah. side that hit you right there. It was absolutely insane. Precision has struggled with the Captain America. Game one, where Captain America was a non factor, was the most convincing one here for Precision, but it seems that Nick Bad is just steamrolling and. Uh, abusing the fact that you have to guess after every charging star, is there a super coming or not? And when you start being afraid and Cap can just throw them out for free, then that's when Cap says he's scariest because he turns into a grappler. And you don't want a grappler that ignores projectiles, but Precision gets the hit right here. We have to see if this is a dead Cap now, KP. Close it out, please. Thank you. Nicely done. One bar. Shouts to uh, Nick Bad dropping the final justice combo, by the way. Sick level three. We get a confirm here. X Factor activation is live. Just got a nuts go. We scuffed it. We so scuffed this, it. The San Diego oh, Sioux for the mix. Does you does he get through? No, just the uh, shockwave into level three. This is the your little cousin can play uh, Marvel combo too. That's the one I teach people. And oh my goodness, Precision looking clean with the Magneto. Excellent grab and suddenly what was looking unwinnable for Nick Bad is looking very, very solid for Precision right here. Just have to complete the combo. And sometimes you just gotta keep it clean. ABC, one, two, three, and we're looking at a two, two to start off the tournament. Let's if this go, is the baby. beginning of the tournament, I cannot imagine the end, KP. Yeah, you see a little bit of drop here and there. You know, you see a flub or two. You think, oh, these players are playing bad. No, they're playing good. They want it, they're nervous. Hands are shaking. Beautiful. I love to see it. Trish getting into the corner space that they want to do. Dodges past the Strider assist. And I kind of see what you're saying about the, the, the beam now. Because the missiles haven't been able to get too much going on. The confirm off the Disruptor assist is good. So we're looking at about 50% life for Captain America. Oh, nice. The missiles right there, but didn't quite capitalize. Staggered a little bit too much. And goes for the team super. And, and this is why you have to be careful against the character like Cap. This is not going to be enough to kill Trish unless we get a reset right here. Goes for the reset. Uh, there's not much Cap can do in that position. His corner game is not the strongest. More of a mid-screen character, which is a rare side in Marvel. Well, usually you like to corner people, but Cap does not. Wants to cover that.
that space with the shield slash and precision Ooh. gets in precisely with that tri dash L. This could be danger for Nickbat. You have to hold a mix. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we wanted this, but it's gonna work out. Well, it could have worked out. We still have pressure. Deadpool just fights out. <laughs> Goodness gracious, perfect decision man. Buys all the space that they need. Watch out for these missiles now. Well done. But right of teleports Whoop. and precision just hunts it down. Finds the confirm on Deadpool. Cook this character. One bar. No bars. Absolutely free. Sometimes life gives you money and resources to okay, spend. This is a setup. I'm full. Ooh. It, it kind of reminds me of the Dormammu chip setups. Oh, that could be a level 3. UX right here. There might not be enough time. Yeah, goes for the trade, but hits the wrong character. Dr. Doom showing why he's one of the best assists in the game. And SMG Precision sending Nick Bad to the loser's bracket right here in our first stream match. Uh, but they did a fantastic job. It's seamless. It looks like it always should have been there. And it's cool to see the, the PC mods pushing the game. Absolutely, and I do believe that we have Static Gorilla on the right here, Ramsho on the left, and Ramsho with a very unorthodox team. Reminds me yeah. of my homeland, Wesker, Captain America, Dormammu. <laughs> Definitely a lot of damage potential right there, but in the neutral department, you're going to have to figure it out. Uh, here, Static Gorilla's scroll has just not been a factor, and, and Dr. Doom tagging in, but the Wesker just seems immaculate at this point. Okay, shouts to... Uh, yeah. Your home, uh, the home of the, the Captain America middle meta. Yeah, um, I mean, who wouldn't want Charging Star as a DHC? Any projectile? Scary. You can hit them with a the cap infinite, but sometimes Sentinel says no cap, like the kids say nowadays. Hits them with the Plasma Storm, and El Robot is about to go in for a mix here on Dormammu. Do you go for the push block? No, just kind of misses the timing. Tries to go for the, the trip guard right there. Not enough. Flies right over, and now this is a crazy scramble. Who's going to flinch first? There's still a Chaotic Flame on deck and hits them with the Luxor, but not enough. Not a punish because Dark Hole has a fast recovery. Oh. oh my goodness, KP. This could be a series of supers chained onto another due to the Tiger Knee mechanic, and this could be game for Remshow, but we never know. It's always very tense. The Sentinel sometimes doesn't hit KP. Well, there, there it is. is. You, know? you called it. Well, we can hard drive this. No, we can't. We're still stuck in the animation. Oh, you oh, know that he's going to go for that hard drive, and that is a punish. Yikes, Remshow a little bit greedy there. And actually, gonna take the L after a crucial drop. I gotta say, that Wesker was freaking though. Um, if that Wesker can stay engaged, shout out to Wesker players who use all their tools. Jaguar dash, Mustang kick, etc. Uh, well, Static Relic said, I actually don't care. I wanna go ahead and do Super Scroll stuff. Ooh, and goes through the TAC right there with Scroll. Um, Skrull is a, a very interesting character because it has a lot of range, but the, the movement is very linear, so you can kind of abuse that with certain characters such as Wesker, where you can just poke at Skrull at angles that you know that you're not at risk. But if he does get the hit, that's when it becomes terrified because there's layer upon layer upon layer. There's a reason this character looks like Shrek a little bit. They're both Ooh. green. Let's see what happens here. And the, the stand light is a low. A lot of people don't know that. Get vibe checked, and now Captain America might be bleeding due to this particular scenario. Nice. I love that reset. That is a perfect reset. That That is the Super Scroll reset, baby. We've seen it from every scroll. You have to have it in your kit. Nicely done, well executed. Rimshow now back to the anchor Dormammu situation again. Doom just closing the distance. The back throw is nice. X Factor 3 pops. Yes, we have to put this character. Oh no! It was a setup. It was a setup. I have no doubts in my mind that looked calculated. And Remshow going for the carpet right here. Static Gorilla just going for the super, making Dorm block a little bit. Had the X to fall down safely, but how safely is safely if you swing once again? The X factor, though, a little bit of trouble changes the, the uh, timing right there for the OTG. And KP, we're going to be looking at a brutal beating right here. The Secret Invasion live action is, is pretty much real. And we're looking at a 2-0 at the moment. Remsho, been close, but just not sealing the deal at key opportunities. I they made that. Good call. I, I like Super Scroll, man. He's a cool character. I sadly did not forget they made that. I didn't like <laughs> it that much. I did not watch it, but I like what I'm seeing from Static Gorilla so far. Going up 2-0. A lead on Rim Show. 
I'm sure maybe changing things up a little bit. No, sticking to the plan so far. Sometimes it's just the colors. A good fashion sense can take you far, but it's the Akuma right here. Oh, I think yeah. this is interesting because Akuma provides a little bit more of team play uh, than Dormammu for this particular team, I would say. Mm -hmm. Choosing the right color, you have to make <laughs> sure you have to match. You gotta of find Gucci. it. Yeah, love that. Shouts to uh, Captain America Akuma. Wesker Akuma is a show we've seen many times over the years. Shouts to the Team EG. That was running rampant Evil Geniuses for a while. Wolverine, Wesker Akuma. But once again, Santa Grella just opens up, immediately disrespects his surroundings, finds a confirm on Wesker, and gets a second confirm already. We built the meter. We're going to be able to get a kill if we want it. Yep. Yo. My man. And this is only one meter, so this means you get the side switch 50 50. Ghost or the Doctor Doom incoming? Maybe has a nasty setup there with the drone, doesn't want oh. Captain America to fall down on the ground, and it was the tenderizer instead. And sometimes when the oh. meat is tenderized, you can proceed to cook it, and that is precisely what Doctor Doom is doing. But Ghost for the snap wants nothing to do with Akuma. I think the Parsec scene is very used to anchor Akuma because there's a couple of strong ones, so wants nothing to do with that, and it's all left to the finest bottom in America, Captain America. Can Steve Rogers do the thing, KP? Oof. Yeah, uh, that extension was not it. I like where our head was going for the super into the X-Factor cancel. That was definitely the right decision. It just gets caught hitting buttons a few times in neutral. Yeah, that's going to do it. Grimshaw going down 0-3 against Static Gorilla. Shout out to Static holding a clinic of Super Scroll play on that one. Versus Deadpool, Dante, Virgil. Deadpool and the Code Boys. Okay, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I, I'm not going to go ahead and commentate too far on matchups because of the way Mario behaves. And you would pretty much call any matchup that they run into a bad matchup, but you couldn't tell. You legitimately couldn't tell with their gameplay. Oh my goodness, that was so sneaky. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord, that was a beautiful confirm as well. Mario starting off with a happy birthday right here, KP, and it's all up to Dante. And as a good friend of mine would say, Dante just needs 74 wins in neutral now to win the game. Because if X Factor runs oh, out, God. it becomes a problem. But Mario 19 looking like it's not a problem at all and it's just going for the simple Ryu combo, very optimized stuff. And this might be one of the fastest matches of Marvel I have ever witnessed. Especially with a Ryu in it, and it's usually Ryu getting owned. So, yeah, nicely done by Mario. And that's what they, this is what they do, man. It's like this, this very, very crisp air dash. Son. Son. It's so dialed in. Mario's team is so dialed in. I, it's crazy. This is definitely the effects of playing your shit for years in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This is what it looks like if you really got it. You can tell. You can tell who is familiar with every single tool they have. I, I have a very uh, ingrained conversation in my mind that I had with Mini Boss one year. And he's like, yeah, uh, Doctor Strange crouch medium punch is an incredible anti-air. And I was like, why do you know this? I just layer it in every <laughs> scenario, you know? And, and this is the magic of, of the players that commit to their team for years. They just know what to do, when to do it, and how to pressure, and it's looking good here for Mario 19, but Meli fighting back, got rid of the Ryu this game, but you have to be scared of El Hombre Araña right here, KP. This man has over 9 oh, maybe now, and this reset Okaiba is very hard to escape. Uh, I said that the Super Scroll mix-up that Static Gorilla was running was that was the perfect mix-up for Scroll. That is the perfect reset mix-up for Spider-Man. If you have ultimate web throw setups in your arsenal, you become so much more deadly, so much more annoying. Or, uh, I, I gotta say, like, I, I was about to say it right before Mario got the hit. That was beautiful, by the way. This, like, very, very simple gameplay of, like, wave dashing on the ground with Ryu. And air dash, you know, at just very non-committal angles with Spider-Man. It's just, it's super clean. It's super clean. You, look at that! It's just wave dash in and hit a low. We're literally playing Street Fighter, man. Mario 19's gameplay reminds me of Concrete. It's just fundamentally solid all of the time. The state of the gameplay doesn't change right here. 
Let's see what happens. Will you have the TAC? Oh. Yes, goes down to get that extra meter. Very, very smart. And Mario 19 looking for every little optimization that the team can get. These characters are limited in their scope, but it doesn't matter if you know what you're doing here. Oh my god. And Mario's got it. Mario's got it. They're angling. They're angling for a 3 0. Melee's gonna have to do something here with the Deadpool level three anchor. I don't know what that's gonna be. The follow up from Ryu that checks them with the Hadoken. Ooh. Those are big feet. Look at that. Oh my goodness, the range is incredible. I never get tired of saying this fact about Ryu, but did you know, KP, that in X Men versus Street Fighter, they went to the moon, and at the end, Cyclops is like, hey, Ryu, do you want a ride back to Earth? And Ryu says, no, I will walk. Those are the feet that Ryu has. Literally weapons that can transmute reality, apparently. So don't let Spider-Man players get away with that. It's never real. Exposing the business. All right, Spiral sticking to their stuff. This time starting Dante, another popular choice for them. Um, versus B-Blue, starting Deadpool, of course. Deadpool Bolt is pretty annoying. Um, by the way, we get a lot of Deadpool on TNS. This is not, this is not like, uncommon that we see three Deadpools already in, in the start of the stream. That's something that also used to be a rare side as well, but you know, embrace change, embrace modernity, and let's see what happens here. Dante on Dante Ooh. violence. This is a nice confirm there from Bilu, but not choosing to, to spend the meter right there sets up the eye of Agamotto instead, and the Deadpool assist to try and get some space, but Spiral was super ready. And just looking clean, this should be a dead Doctor Strange. Not a lot of health in this character. It just needs mm. to complete the combo. And that's why I say should sometimes, to put it on the players as B Blue gets a happy birthday right after. And this is what you get for not capitalizing here, KP. Ooh, scuffed incoming though. So B Blue not able to get the second phase of this going. Ooh, the Dark Matter confirm. Hello, Spiral. That was beautiful. Nicely done. Puts a ribbon on that. Holy smokes. Yo. Yeah, and Spiral with the, the Dorm Shuma composition that we've seen had so much success throughout the years. Many, many great players with it and just so much damage. I think that's the beauty of it. Gets to charge the spells one more time. Let's do it again, just like that song. And this should be a dead Deadpool right here with the proper oh, he's optimization. Dead. He's super dead. And 1-0 here for Spiral. Swinging back and forth with all those happy birthdays, but... Sometimes the set play is just what makes the difference between a good tournament run and a bad tournament run because the less variance, yeah. the more you play the single player game, the better it is for your mental health, I would say. That is 100% um, a, a Dormammu Shuma specialty is the incoming situation. So couldn't agree more. Whoa, massive punish on the Doctor Strange assist. People have got to be careful calling Doctor Strange for the rest of the match now. Got to give him some time to heal. I like how we're, we're just challenging the air here with Deadpool. Stacking on so much damage on Dante. Dante had 30% life left. Ooh, we stuffed the super even. A lot of Deadpool options getting used here. Dante actually found the hit, but didn't believe. And, and something crazy. that's worth noting about um, more modern Dantes is that they're very willing to just teleport in your face. And a lot of players are not really punishing it. And that's been the difference between Spiral's pressure just continuing. Uh, just B-Blue not taking the turn back, goes for the guns into guns. And I know this is a big argument, but a, a gun doesn't solve another gun, as we could see here with Dante. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, KP. Doctor Strange needs to escape instantly here. Yeah, a couple of sequences almost got that kill. Oh, even better, the follow-up situation. We hit Shuma Grant, so now she's down to the, the, the Mamu, excuse me, all by themselves. I like that. Just falling, making it awkward for Spiral. But B Blue is kinda getting caught here now. The X Factor activation is still there. Do we need um, to use it? We do use it. I like to get this party started. Keeping it simple, you know, going for the, the chaotic flame right there. And nice block. A lot of people don't block low on that carpet. That's what you're supposed to do to get out of the mix, but sometimes grab beats block. Ouch. And that's precisely what happened as Spiral gets away with one more game here. This should be more than enough to kill. And B-Blue has been so close, but needs to keep it 
uh, less close by just sealing the deal with the combos, not forgiving, and getting rid of that Dormammu that's been the MVP so far for Spiral King. Hell yeah. B Blue's done really well in these games. This is a classic situation of 2 0, but it's close. I think that you're right. Finish your plate. Would have, would have definitely served them in the last game. Mine not going get to get a chance this time because two characters getting smoked at once. Deadpool going down. Yeah. Stalking player is going to make this really annoying, man. We have teleport. We have the assist call. Oh, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody's human. Except Spiral, apparently. That was a very robotic confirm. That was very, very crazy stuff. And Ibulu was so close until it was the third game. And sometimes players just build momentum, end up uh, running over their opponents. And Spiral with the second quick 3-0 in a row that we see for this tournament. I would disagree with that, actually. Because although Chris is a very projectile heavy character, there's not a lot of multi-hits. And there's not a lot of mobility, so as long as you can keep pressuring, you can put Chris in these sorts of scenarios where it's either super jump out or, or suffer, you know? You, you have to get that space and it's hard to fight. Uh, big body teams are known for smothering well and like these Ooh. sorts of scenarios are so terrifying because what are you gonna do? You, uh, you no, only no. need to get the one hit. No, 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 no. Reaction, but Kill it with fire, bro. Kill it with fire. That's how you do it. Come on, he was getting it all worked out. I saw NPA dialing in on the neutral. VR said, I'm gonna disrespect you. I'm gonna make this my neutral now. That's the know, thing, bro. AP. Um, oh. Stealth is a resource in fighting games, especially when you're playing a big body character. And General Re Reaction knows this. They're not afraid to just do the setup here. Gonna tag in Hagar for the layered mix with the drones. Wants so nothing to do with Strider Kiryu. Double jumps out and now MPH gets an opportunity to play. But it's Hagar is one of the characters that tells Strider, Estate quieto, stop moving. Because I would just Larry at any craziness uh, on site right now. Gonna have to focus on maybe hitting assist, but general reaction just knows it's a waiting game until Strider becomes a character made out of wet paper that you just yeah, smack yeah. away. This, this is a W, even losing the Hagar. You have to yeah. work so hard as MPH here. Yeah, this sucks. This definitely sucks. Um, MPH could do it. This is a great way to start it up. Getting a couple hits on Hulk. But even with Sinnoh coming out and you get to climb the robot and really take advantage of that huge hitbox, it's just so awkward. And he even gets hit here at the start. We have to dig deep. That's a good start, baby. And, and it's kind of what we were talking about, you know, some characters cool. just blow up teleports and I feel like Hulk is one of those characters, so it's so scary as Strider right now. MPH really needs to find the right place and the right time and gets it but doesn't quite believe and suddenly this is looking close because Sentinel is, is the piñata right here. But do you even jump here as General Reaction? I think just laser into super seals the deal right now if General Reaction sets it up at the correct time. Yeah, but NPH is doing the right thing. Okay, they were. <laughs> Yo, what was that? <laughs> Until they jumped in and died. They were doing the right thing. Being non-committal and looking for a chance. That was not the chance. Got smoke. It's NFL season starting KP and, and Sentinel is, came here to play. Mm. Once again, these scrambles just benefit uh, Team Big Bodies because you're trying to force just one mistake. You don't mind losing it over and over as long as you win it once. I feel like that's the difference and that's why it's so scary for Chris players to fight Bro. these sorts of teams. But so far, MPH has not made the mistake. And no. even it clean, suddenly very, very favorable. Now that there's no armor, you have to play an honest game here as general reaction. He knows, man. He knows. I can see MPH playing with wisdom in the matchup, putting out all those hit, multi hitting moves together. Unfortunately, that we see another power drive drop. I'm sure we'll probably only see that out of every single player tonight because that move is so inconsistent. Big punish on the Hagger assist. Ouch, man. And every time you call that assist, it's going to it's gonna stack up more and more damage. So it really extra matters when you, when you get it on Hagger. Oh, oh killer. killer. What? 
gets the choke right there. Oh my goodness, looking like LeBron in the finals. This is Sentinel at the moment. Let's see what happens here. Dante is out of the picture and suddenly the momentum is swinging. Tags in Hagar for the better mix. Goes for the little cry right there and just getting the chip on Chris is a big W. Forces him to waste the meter, but Strider's not gonna go back to safety here. Still in the corner. This is very, very terrifying stuff and you have to be scared of your MPH. Save that X Factor wisely. Goodness, nice chip out of the overhead oh, right there. KP is looking rough for general reaction. Yes, Hagger's super dead here. Sentinel coming in. We could mix them up. I was about to say, but we gotta be wary of the hard drive, so we do the we do the smart thing here, I guess, which is bring back in Chris. Try to milk some more damage off this life bar. Oh, that's so cheap. Really annoying angle for Sentinel there. This will hit. Should catch Chris, yeah, and and now catches Strider as well. Do you get a rocket punch right after? No general reaction. Goes for the honest mix and oh, the jump no. medium, calling out the master from MPH. General reactions experience really coming through, and MPH 84 in a little bit of trouble has had just about every right decision. But if you crumble once against this sort of team, this is what happens, and this is what makes team big bodies so terrifying. <laughs> I felt that. I literally felt that. That sucks so bad for MPH. But G GR is, is, you know, playing their cards right. Staying in all these games. Keeping it competitive even when things are down bad with Sentinel. That's a big conversion. Still alive. Super, super gonna get us out. Ooh, and goes That's for the punish here on Strider. A little bit scary. Using that flight mode and Lariat to position. Very, very smart. Just the threat of it is enough to scare MPH to not approach. Giving Sentinel the chance to push Chris into the corner. And I feel like that's something that a lot of Marvel players are not aware. We know when you want to escape. Big yeah. body players know when you're scared. And that's the worst thing you have to do. You have to fight for that space against a player like General Reaction. As Dante tagging in, Hagar trying to call out a mix here. Double jumps once again. Very brave from MPH. And the bravery could put him back into this game. That, that was definitely tense, but I do like it. We get out. We get to build some space. Confirm is here for us. If we just extend this a little bit. The level three should be more than enough. Let's not get too greedy, man. Okay. All right, fine. It's a Dante player. Oh no, he misses the OTG. Hager hilarious, but doesn't super super. It really wouldn't have worked out there. Oh, oh man. Rider yeah. call right there, very smart, but not enough to kill, and this is the Dante special. Will this be enough to get rid of Hulk? You have to land this consistently, but Parsec makes things terrifying, and this should be uh, at least a waste of meter right now for MPH. No punish, though. It might have still been in the recovery, and now MPH just seeming a little bit afraid, because how do you kill that which refuses to die, KP? <laughs> That, that's a pretty good way to describe how GR has been in the set. But once again, NPH finds himself in a, a head position. They just have to play smart, play crisp, finish off this Hagger life bar. Great job. Now we manage the Sentinel threat, which last time we didn't do an amazing job of. But surely we learned from our mistakes, I think. Okay, Sentinel's going to jump out. Ooh, but the X Factor kind of messes with the jam session into Vajra confirm and just trying to ignore this airplay right here. Oh my goodness, the stand H trying to cause a mistake, but MPH putting yes. in a little bit of work and gets the much needed game, you know? Yes. When you win one game, you know you can win two more. You don't want ever want to get steamroll. You need that confidence boost, and that is what MPH is showing us right now, KP. And I like to see a competitive set. You know, we saw a couple of 3-0s. I like what we were seeing in the neutral patterns from MPH. So I want to see it go long. I want to see more Marvel games. I want to see more Chris versus Hulk. Isn't this the, uh, isn't this like one of the fights in the trailer? Absolutely. I think it's in the, in the, I don't know if it's the trailer or the vanilla trailer, but they do fight. And Chris showing us why Ooh. he's the one equipped to fight against the angriest being in the universe right now. Aside from our stream viewers tonight when their favorite player drops, but let's see <laughs> what happens here. Just tagging out, gonna get the, the punish is MPH, and that team super is so valuable. Gets you, confirms you would never have before, and this is just looking like a, a steamroll for the game four. Well, we're seeing what it looks like when MPH gets the muscle, that control. Not just take control, which is a good start, but you gotta muscle it. 
You know, make them really feel the weight of having all those options. So many more tools that you can use in this matchup that aren't just, you know, the, the, the traditional big body archetypes. I mean, Chris has tons of projectiles. I think the fire grenade is a great choice. Obviously, the flamethrower is working out super well. The machine gun. And then playing really well with Dante, too. Well, Arc Forge there man. with the $100 contribution to the Yo, match arena. Arc Forge? Shout outs to Arc Forge. Much appreciated. Our players need all the support Dude. they can get. Just look at the level of gameplay you're seeing. You can tell that this is years upon years upon years of oh, work. man. You could have been doing any other thing, but you chose to play UMBC3. And that, to me, is not only commendable, but incredible. It shows dedication, yeah. it shows passion, and it shows that there's quite nothing like putting the fear of God into a Chris player at the beginning of the match as General Reaction gets the first hit. This should be a dead Chris Redfield with the proper optimization. Does get the OTG. And no. this the field for drops it and MPH suddenly back in the match. Crucial drop. Very, very unfortunate. Thank you again, r Forge. You're just such a regular supporter of these tournaments. Like, seriously. Seriously, on some from the bottom of my heart shit, thank you so much for what you do. It really is awesome. We appreciate that, and Mustard, of course, dropping the 30. We love some players get paid. Oh, what a capitalization, man! You mentioned it. This confirm adds so much lethality to this team. That is sick. Very, very sick. And Dark Hagar is still a very notable threat, but Dark Hagar needs to survive this next combo right here. I don't think it's gonna be quite enough. Uh, it all depends on Dante. Oh, uh, he got him. He got him. Yeah. It is, him. Is, is it enough? Pause. Yeah. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> no, it was enough. That's really, really worth bringing up. Hawkeye also can create some really bad problems for Doom as well. So this this match, as far as matchups go, we were talking about matchups to play into this. This definitely is not free for Ray Ray. We'll see what happens as we approach the neutral stage. Man, if I'm Ray Ray right now, game, I try to do precisely that, KP. I have to maul the Deadpool, make sure that there is absolutely no interaction mm. because the moment you let this character get spaced, it becomes so, so much of a trouble to get in, especially because your assist can get sniped. And a confirm here could mean a lot of trouble, but Bruno doesn't quite land it, and, and things are going to get hectic at the moment. Goes for the jab check. Oh, my goodness. I feel like we're going to have an incredible set right now, KP. Yeah, Bruno is playing on a big MS deficit, guys. Like, pretty big. It cannot be exaggerated. So if you see anything, you know, that's a little off or a hard read, it's because they really have to do that. But so far, Ray Ray has been a blanket, like you said, aggressive, getting in early, making things problematic for Bruno at the start, not allowing him to take care of any options. Dante goes just like that. And Hawkeye's kind of free on incoming. That was a good choice from Ray Ray, just baiting out the Gimlet. Ooh, but the thing is, no. yeah, you had to do precisely that. You get pushed away whether you hit Hawkeye or not, but if you go into a cinematic super, then you're in a solid situation. And right now, Bruno in a solid situation to make this comeback. X-Factor still lasting a long time here for Hawkeye. If you do get rid of the Doctor Doom and the one mix, Sentinel can't really do much about Hawkeye, especially if uh, Hawkeye gets the kill, but you have to finish the combo right here and this might put Bruno at a big disadvantage. You can zone all you want, but Ray Ray's contempt with getting the health with the health back here, KP. Yeah. It is possible to get a snipe on Doctor Doom. We have to take care of Magneto. This is this is the tough part for Hawkeye. Because Oh bro, that was so precise with the crouching medium anti-air. Are you serious? Ray Ray chases down the second opportunity and cleans him. But Bruno was looking scary there for a second. Absolutely could have made a run out of that. Ah, oh, fireworks in the game in the first round, man. Holy smokes. Yeah, and I feel like we're just gonna have a close set. Ray Ray trying to get the confirmation right here. Goes for the reset right after. Knew that it wasn't a comfortable position to kill and opted to go for a reset instead. That is the mark of an experienced player. Sometimes you know when your execution might betray you and you just choose to avoid that scenario altogether. Let's see what happens here as Deadpool exits the screen via death. Dante tags in with the defense on Bruno's side. If he can get a little bit of space, maybe tagging in the Hawkeye could be good. But Ray Ray, once again, that crouch medium has been so, God. so crucial in putting in the work here, KP. That's how, that's how you know Ray Ray has played Magneto. Like, like, 
like really played Magneto over the years. There's so much of that toolkit that gets expanded and utilized from Ray Ray's hands. All right, now Hawkeye is back in, so this is this is Bruno's game plan, I think, actually, is to get Hawkeye Dante versus Dr. Doom. You could clean out this character with super solid zoning, being very, very careful with our options. You can mitigate the entire character of Dr. Doom right here. Look at oh, this. And Magneto as well, just bleeding. And the thing is that as long as Hawkeye has meter, you're not really scared of anything that Ray is doing. Ray committed a little bit too hard. It might force Bruno to spend the next right now. Magneto still bleeding, but not dead. However, this is a victory. Getting rid of Sentinel's X Factor. Ray needs to push hard as Bruno's playing the defense very immaculately at the moment. Just jumping back, forcing Ray to guess. And Ray just keeping it conservative. Gets the guard break right after I say that. Surprising everybody, even Bruno. And now that Hawkeye might be gone here Dante is gonna be in a little bit of trouble because he's not precisely known for the damage dealing he's, he's definitely gone well done Ray Ray spending the cheddar even though Magneto coming in a massive risk with all that red life if you just keep your sequences tight the gas pedal should still be yours oh he's gonna confirm that dang that was sneaky that was a sneaky drones call I didn't hear that Bruno sure didn't hear that yeah, you know, sometimes you can tell the experience, and even though Bruno has put up an excellent fight showing us what Brazil is made of, uh, Ray Ray has just been smothering the Deadpool. It's just been a non-factor for the entire match. The MVP has definitely been Hawkeye here, but once again, Hawkeye Dante, not really a shell known for the damage. You have to work so hard, and Ray Ray is just trying to invalidate anything these characters do. Baits the double jump and tries to force a drones mix-up, but Bruno fighting it out correctly with these jump mediums from Dante. Oh. However, everybody's human KP until they get feet divin. Yeah. yeah, Bruno was definitely fighting there. Ray Ray respecting the offense. He's bringing him in. Okay, I see you. The jam session is going to allow us to buy some space. Ray Ray trying to close the distance stubbornly with this Dr. Doom. He's like plodding forward. Like, I can find it. There's going to be an angle here somewhere. I, I, I'm, I'm going to find it, man. I promise. But there it is. Getting, getting a little bit of chip. Knows that it's a battle of attrition and he can win the war. The Gimlet, though, getting rid of Dr. Doom. And if this mix up is the correct one for Bruno, not tagging in Dante, just going for that defensive game plan. This could be crazy for Ray Ray. You cannot get clipped by a single arrow. Ray might even spend the X ray here oh, just to time out Bruno's. No confirm there with the capture state and KB. Things are looking very bad for Bruno now that Dante is bleeding. Yeah, practically dead. If you call that assist, he's very, very much at risk for just outright dying. Well done from Ray Ray, but didn't have the didn't have the meter. Just built that one bar, I think. So we didn't get the hard drive extension. Dante comes in with double trigger, so that does help us rebuild some of this red light, even though we have to play him on point. It's not gonna be much though. We're still more than over half dead. What a whip punish right there. You can tell Ray Ray has been playing a little bit of Street Fighter with that one. Just punish the Helmbreaker and Bruno doesn't get the proper push block right there in the chip scenario. Maybe tried to space it out a little bit too much and gets hit by the drones chip out as Ray Ray gets a 3-0. Well, Chaotic Flame is a really, really nasty full screen answer, especially for punishing assists. If you're trying to work things like Morgan missiles, things like that, it's not going to get, it's not going to go the way you want it to. But... We're not going to get that kind of a, that matchup with Morgan. We're going to have Lane. Eccentric is going to try to get around the screen and be annoying and build meter in passive ways and then attack in explosive angles. So it's not going to be this drawn out neutral war where they're trying to full screen each other. It's kind of going to be cat and mouse. Spiral is going to have to hunt this down. And he is doing that by bro blowing up the Morgan assist. I feel like that's something that's been an innovation in this particular matchup against Morgan Phoenix. You're not supposed to chase Chun Li, you're supposed to punish Morgan every time she's called. Yes. And right now, Spiral with the, the threats right here onto the Phoenix Eccentric, just trying to fight it out, try to escape, tag at the right moment, forces uh, Spiral to you know commit to the assist, and that was when a safe tag was available. And now, suddenly, three meters have been built, and you're just chasing around. You have to be so terrified. And the thing about Chun Li is that. Not only is she good at getting random hits because she has high priority buttons, but she has great mobility, a very unpredictable triple jump, double dash, uh, just pretty much any tool that a character could ask for here. And Spiral going for the DHC to try and make something happen with Dormammu knows that Morgan might just tag in at any moment. And Eccentric maybe choosing to forfeit Chun-Li 
just to speed up the process here. Uh, very interesting, KP. Yeah, I mean, this is the right choice, I think. I think Spiral's in the right heads, the headspace here. Get Dormammu in and start working immediately. You want to mitigate as much of this Morgan as possible because, you know, they say it, this is like, quote-unquote, free free damage, right? You know, at this point, when you have the Morgan or the, uh, the Phoenix already locked down. Okay, we choose not to activate there. Interesting situation. We're going to have a very, very weird Phoenix pop coming up soon. Yep, and, and that's another thing that you have to take into account in the Phoenix matchup is the way she pops is the difference between you getting 5 billion stalking players and tagging in Dante or just going for uh, Hail Mary Yo. right now. And it's looking like it was the Hail Mary, uh, the Team Super right there, and now Eccentric gets to play. X-Factor might be available here in such great durability on those orbs that Phoenix shoots, and now it's a guessing game, and who wants to be guessing against Phoenix in the corner? It's definitely not a great look right now, especially because El Pulpo has limited options on incoming, but nice blocks here from Spiral. Is this gonna catch anything? No, just commits a little bit too hard, and you can tell the panic was there because just committed in a situation where Phoenix wasn't even close. He had a little bit of time to react right there, KP. Been there. We all been there. Phoenix <laughs> just kind of scares you. You know, you could see a teleport at any second. Um, just get kind of very stressed with the power level of that character when she's doing her thing that it can force out some errors. So I'm going to give Spiral a pass on that as we jump into game two. A nice, beautiful, long meter building confirm here. Gonna be able to put Chun Li away, but we are building a lot of meter for our opponent as well. Phoenix comes in with three bars here. We really need to get a hit early on. Do not let her get out for another cycle. That's gonna be pretty close, man. Oh, we do get the kill on the snap. That's massive. That's huge. That is one of the best case scenarios when fighting a Phoenix team. Uh, it's not a, a easy to happen occurrence. And Spiral just spending every single meter, but it has always gone for the meaty. No, no mix-ups right after. Spends the X right there and oh, that could be crucial. That X on eccentric side to try and stay alive. And now a Phoenix is almost a guarantee. We have to get a raw launch here or something insane like that. And now Phoenix is right there. Will Spiral be able to survive the onslaught of pressure from the bird? And Ooh, oh no. my goodness, didn't believe KP, what do you do in this scenario? That sucks, man, because Spiral definitely had to hit there. But I do say we have some, some positives. We, we did force out the X-Factor, so that is a huge mitigating force in the power level of Phoenix. She's going to have to use healing field now. So we, yeah, we activate, whoa, we actually activated it twice? That's kind of strange. Look at all that healing. What a Maybe cheap back super. Oh no, and shout outs to Southern California right there with that tag. Very questionable, and Spiral could have bled for it, but it just didn't happen. Goes for the punish right there on the Shuma, oh. but the greed on Eccentric side also not working out in their favor. And now Morgan, definitely a character that can do this, but it's going to be rough, especially with the jam session and Shuma assist present. You have to get a, a very, very... Uh, calculated hit right here against Spiral Gormamo, but Spiral just somehow icing out the situation in this in this particular matchup, KP. Uh, was doing a really, really good job at, at the start, keeping things close to Morgan. Still is, to be honest. Um, because Spiral's life bars were already so low, I would think that that's possible for Eccentric. But the reality of the matchup, we've already discussed it enough. Very, very brutal for Morgan to make that comeback on her own, even though it, it would be technically possible. So Spiral clutches it out, ties it up, one to one. We get another couple of early hits on Chun-Li, not able to convert though. And this is another thing about Chun-Li. She is a small body character, so sometimes uh, confirms that would work and other characters are what particularly wonky. And goes for the, the 805 setup, as I like to call it, with the Dante side switch and teleport. Doesn't quite get the hit, and now Eccentric going a little bit on the offense, trying to escape Spiral's pressure. Spiral has been good with those jump mediums, calling out what Chun Li's trying to do, but three meters already on deck. Morgan tags in. Not afraid. You have to get this mix right now in Phoenix, or else it might be curtains. Well, I gotta say, Spiral's had a ton of snaps. Like the, the shots on goal against the Phoenix here across two, three games has been pretty high. However, Eccentric not holding any of it. He's been pretty much able to navigate every situation, defend, and get into Dark Phoenix anyways. 
So well done on both players. Spiral getting the shots, but Eccentric defending them. The stalking player staying right there. A little bit of aggression. And she the did. stalking player should kill her, yes, because she was in the middle of an air dash. You cannot block during an air dash. That is a thing a lot of people forget about. And suddenly Spiral in a really good position. What could have been a steamroll right there from Eccentric. Uh, one or two bad decisions and, and Spiral just... Playing it immaculately, now all you can do is run away, throw those spells out and, and just not make mistakes. Don't call assist point blank in the corner. And you should be good as Spiral here. Ooh, goes for the robotic confirmed from earlier. And now things could get uh, spicy, but no, just gets the fishing cook instead, KP. The robotic confirmed from earlier. It really was, though. When Spiral hit that, it looked like they practice that every single day. All right, so looking pretty good in this matchup so far as well. Dante, a great answer against Chun-Li. Able to teleport and stay active at all those ranges that chun Li's usually really annoying at running away at. A good com combo to start things off for Eccentric, though. Shuma Beam is so rude. Already three meters. It's just so rough. Close to four. And Chun-Li doesn't mind. Beautiful air-to-air -air confirm. I've never seen that one before. Great stuff here from Eccentric, innovating the Chun-Li a little bit, and the extension at the very end is going to be more than enough. Phoenix is all but a guarantee, and Spar losing Dante mm. has been, uh, you, you were saying, shots on goal right now, but Eccentric at the moment looking like the best goalkeeper of all time. Jan Luigi on just escaping every single danger scenario, and the defense has paid off. It's looking rough for Spiral, my friend. It's a good game for Eccentric. Uh, spinning bird kick has been putting in a ton of work in this entire set, but definitely in this game, I love the looping of the combos and I love spinning the resource. Absolutely, let's get Dormammu out of here. We can farm a meter against Shuma easily. Yep, and the thing about Shuma is if Shuma kills with a throw, Phoenix is a non-issue. But you have to be in the position true. where you get rid of two characters first. And very Spiral true. is taking some risks. It's vibe checking Eccentric right there, going for those very unsafe uh, Shuma balls. And the back that has a little bit of invincibility, nice grab, takes away the meter, and goes for the snap on Phoenix. I don't know if I agree. I think at this point you just get rid of Chun. I don't disagree because you're going to have to deal with that Chun Lee eventually, which is pretty problematic for Shuma, anyways. But I guess if you think, hey, the biggest problem is going to be Dark Phoenix, I'm going to go ahead and just try to get rid of it now. And the X Factor gets popped out. This is suddenly a nuke of a situation for Eccentric. Still ahead, but Spiral with massive potential to make this comeback now. Where before it was like pretty hard. Now it's only like really hard. You know, it's extremely hard still with Morgan, but he gets the raw hit right there. Eccentric has not shown to be able to punish those Shuma balls. Goes for the reset of Kaiba left, right, and just tagging out of the dangerous scenario. But the Shuma jab is there. Spiral needs to clean up the hits because Shuma has had a couple of opportunities, and you need to be clean with this one. Goes for the extension. Should be enough for a meter. Now it's all down to Morgan. Does not have the unblockable option with the level 3 anymore. But there is something that could be done Whoa. in the crouch heavy. You just have to clean this up as Spiral KP. Yeah, low time on the clock as well. So a clutch moment for Spiral to lock it in and finish off this character. Excuse me? Are you really going to let Eccentric get the drop and reverse into their own combo? Level 3 was done. 2-2. Two -two. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It is wow. the U.S. Open season after all, you know, the tournament's oh, still going and definitely a lot of tennis balls being chucked right now. It was just in Spiral's hands. You could feel it. And now, if you're in a situation like oh, this, does the emotional factor mess with you, knowing it was in your hands and you let it get away? Spiral uh, immediately, immediately hits rematch there. And I'm thinking if that happens to me, I'm putting my hand... My, my face in my hands and chilling for a second. This time stars Dormammu. So trying to work kind of the similar game plan that you would do against Morgan, against Chun-Li. Build the spells, attack vertically with the, the, the purification towers, and then find your opportunity. This time it's an air throw. Gonna build a lot of damage on Chun-Li and snapping Phoenix. Much, much more success immediately with the Dormammu incoming. You finally get a kill on Phoenix after a snack bag. That's a massive win if you're Spiral. Absolutely. And now uh, it's still trouble, though, because Morgan is a character that can really spend the meter very, very well. 
opting to choose to get rid of Dormammu here, and I think that is the correct decision. Dormammu is a playmaker on the team, and Morrigan with Astral Vision and uh, the thousand kicks right there, the Kyakuretsu Kyaku, I think it's a hundred kicks, sorry, uh, from Chun Li has very strong corner game. You have to hold a mix, and Spiral just goes for the hair, gone shots. I don't know if that was intended, but paying off as he fights out of the corner, but Morrigan's still a threat, and committing a little bit too hard could mean the end of the set right here is just so much pressure and eccentrics morgan has been looking good and the triple o just vibe checking any chicken jumping right there and there it is it's all down to shuma but no one another drop right here it's just They're playing good They're playing forth. good yeah baby nice air throw confirmed from spiral no just kidding it's another drop they're playing good, man. They want it. I know they do. It's two to two. They're basically even on meter, even on life bars. This is whenever the tension mounts the highest. We're choosing to bring in Shuma Gorath now against Morgan. This is a desperate situation if I've ever seen one. We gotta be careful. Let Dante recover some of that life. Oh, the super the comes out. Ooh, but gets crossed up, does not have access to that Devil Trigger, however. Shuma's weight is cosmic and eccentric, missing two combos because of it. Just knowledge check on knowledge check in this particular matchup. It's so back and forth. You can tell that Mom's Spaghetti has been served on both sides of the plate right here. Let's see what happens. Uh, activating the Astro Vision, making Shuma hold a little bit of chip damage and the lockdown Ooh. is going to be very, very effective here. Do you tag in the Dante? Yeah, 14 dude. seconds on the clock. You need that Devil Trigger and both of them X. Things are getting Ooh. crazy. Bro, Dante actually moving too fast to combo off that Psycho Crusher. Doesn't matter. We find the follow-up hits on Morgan. It's down to Judge Chun Lee. You know she's going to try to Spinning Bird kick her way out of this. Spiral trying to close it out. Three seconds to go. Oh my goodness, the level three? What? I don't know who's winning at this point. Oh, Dante's still alive. Oh, oh my, my goodness, goodness, but Dante's still surviving. He's actually going to take it. That is a highlight set of the night if I've ever seen one. I think if you put it on paper again, Chris Redfield versus Hagger, I think this can work. I mean, I do. I think with the Dante and the Strider assist as well, this could definitely work against the bomb move. So we have the pieces here. We just have to play really, really up to our potential here for MPH. Unfortunately, a massive assist punish coming in at the start of the game, giving Jason a big lead early. And I think that this is very wise from Jason's team. Um, you can always down. switch your your team order in in marble at the start of the match it's a surprise factor that you can play with and jason kato's team really lends itself to doing that particularly the stalking player sorry the chaotic claim gets nullified Yo. by the chris grenade a lot of people don't know that but it nullifies almost every other super in the game however jason kato is aiming to cover that angle that chris redfield doesn't really like uh, handling which is the diagonal upwards angle and now the defense on mph was not clean tried to double jump there or maybe swing dante's out of the picture and and you know that Jason Kiddo is looking to set up a snucking yeah. player into a Hagar tag in order to make sure that Strider does not get to play. Huh. You thought the stalking flare, Shuma Gorath assist stuff was annoying? Man, this setup with the hard to blockable uh, flame carpet headbutts, the side switches, cross ups, etc. Oh, it, it's, it's deep, man. The layers run really deep on Jason Kiddo's incoming OP. So nice job from Jason to get that Magneto hit in early and get the game plan moving as quickly as possible. Now MPH wants to slow it down, get more obstacles in the way of Magneto, more punish attempts in neutral, and uh, really threaten this character's life bar. Nice, until we get something like this. Confirm that can put this character away. Yep, and now Dormammu's tagging in, but it's a very different scenario where Dormammu's tagging gets hit by the cross-up setup right there from MPH. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And this should be a dead Dormammu because there's three meters on deck. We've seen what the Team Super can do. We've seen what the DHC does in this particular scenario. But once again, we were talking about the mentality of Dark Hagar. Yes, it's rough, but you know that if you get the hit, they will be terrified. So yes. it really comes down to will MPH stay strong, play the defensive game, or will Jason Kiddo get the one hit needed? Made a statement all the way on the incoming too, just swang. That's yeah, not Jason, something you're used to. Jason is known, of course, for making these quote unquote, you know, impossible level comebacks. And it's usually starting with the Lariat. His Lariat timing in neutral 
is so strong, he gets more random lariats in neutral than almost any other Hagger I see. And it's definitely a starter, but MPH goes right back to neutral, man. He said, that's all you had. I waited out the sequence. You gave me your best shot. I'm going to milk out the rest of this X Factor and start creating problems. Okay. And I told you, kidding. sometimes as Hagar, all you have to do is dash up something crazy and the momentum could swing. You have to cover for the double jump here. Your Jason Kiddo does not. And just aggressively plinking at Dante. What's Dante going to do about this? Tries to go for the zoning pattern nah. and get the hit. Nah. You have nah. to stay strong here. If you're NPH, Jason Kiddo bet it all on the panic. And MPH stood strong. That could have been a command grab. That could have been a level three. That could have been tragic. But MPH made the right decision. That is a, that is a scary situation. After a knockdown, Hacker chasing you down. You're absolutely right. A level three would have been pretty scary there. But I like the way that they grind it out. Oh man, Jason Kidda with the corner pressure, able to find an easy hit on Chris. Big bread and butter damage coming in here. Chris with a lot of HP. No, we actually dropped the combo. Right at was a crucial miss. And that was a beautiful jam session call because that could have been a grab reset and suddenly jam session just made it so, so uncomfortable. And once again with the grenade nullification, but the teleport trying to catch their model and somehow uncrosses up the dorm. No X Factor though, and just raw tag Hagar. What's Dante gonna do to Yo. Hagar? But what's Hagar gonna do to Chris here? KP, he's gonna scoop him crazy sequence right there yeah i like the idea honestly kind of using chris as like a sacrificial lamb if need be to restore momentum in this matchup but jason was able to get the, the kill and even with dante kind of scrambling still trying to get out of neutral 150 dollars from reaper incredible stuff 50 dollars are you kidding me that That's is such a massive donation to the match arena. Incredible donation. They just like, doubled it. They it's just incredible. doubled the match arena. It's oh beautiful to see. Just wow. like it's beautiful to see Hagar just standing there in front of Strider. It, it just gives me a, a personal satisfaction. I'm biased as a Hagar player. I'm always rooting for Hagar to smack Strider's little dome. As Jason Kiddo takes the lead in this set. It's I'm still blocked by that donation. $150 to the match arena. You know. Three over $300 in at this point for the players tonight. Awesome, awesome support. Thank you so much. That is that is such a huge contribution. Thank you. The players are gonna love that tonight. Jason definitely feels like I feel like Jason saw that donation come in because now we're <laughs> we're playing with a little bit more uh, urgency. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Definitely a little bit more pizzazz right there. Let's see what happens. Chris Redfield barely living, but gets reset. And now Dante gets birthday. Uh, a, a basic rule of Marvel is don't call your assist in the corner. That usually only goes one way, and it's the wrong one. As Dante gets clipped, Magneto barely has to work for the kill right here. Gets the two meters and spends them, not because they're necessary to kill, but because you do get a better setup of this scenario. Gonna go for the tag in into Hagar, and oh my goodness. What does Strider do here? You have to be aware. But that Lariat, perhaps a little Yo. bit of giving MPH a chance. Yolo yeah. Boros is now a thing. Yeah, I can agree more. This definitely gives MPH a chance. The x Factor forcing out a Hagar there. Oh! Oh! Oh, okay. I see you. I see you. He said no chance, actually. Uh, just throws him out of the wall clean. That is a massive feel bad if you are a Strider player. You probably don't see that very often at all. And Jason looked like they were ready. Yeah, I'm not going to say anymore. I'm not going to say anymore. Thank you guys for redeeming the codes. Bump up that pot for the players a little bit more. We want to juice the pockets of some Marvel players tonight. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. And, and you were talking about those difficult to deal with speed tackles, but DXP was ready this time. Just threw a setup right there with the round trip, had the perfect spacing in order to force a mistake. And the plasma beam and plasma beam violence just denying the neutral for both of these players. Judgment cut, such an underused tool, but DXP using it correctly. And the plink aggressively into grab is something that we've seen twice now. First with Jason Kiddo, now with Liberal Terminator. The beautiful grab could swing the momentum all the way because you know, KP, that Liberal Terminator is not trying to play a two player game just trying to speed run the single player aspect of umbc3 at the moment 
Yeah, I, I, I said, oh my god, as soon as we started this match, because it was so funny seeing the Liberal Terminator just immediately <laughs> spin that bar uh, on the speed tackle. But yeah, the situations pay off. Uh, scrambly neutral to start things off, and Nova's already cooking through a character and mixing up the second. Strider's gonna hold all this damage in X Factor. I like this decision. You're gonna be able to kill Strider for super cheap. That's gonna be at the price of nada. And we have two bars now to set up on Dr. Doom, who's weak in neutral, weak on incoming, but DXP is fighting out. Turns on the X Factor, blocks the speed tackle. They've been ready so far, but you know that speed tackle is gonna hit eventually. Oh, but it doesn't need to hit when Dr. Doom just gets scooped right after, and this should be uh, a win right here on Liberal Terminator's side, just convincing in the first game, and it really tells you how much of these two players are momentum-based players, where one scoop or, or just one stray hit at the beginning of the match just changes the entire way everything goes. DXP needs to be a little bit more careful with those teleports, make sure they're covered, and goes for the Helmbreaker, and wow. as we're saying, momentum-based, and uh, DXP's looking pretty based right now in the corner. Let's Let's see what happens here against the Nova. What is the mix on Spencer? You have to circumvent the Bionic Arm, which is the one tool that LT has at the moment. Yeah, uh, it's a great position for DXP. Don't get me wrong, but you already mentioned it. Everything's gonna come down to this Bionic Arm. LT is just a little bit too far away to get that punish. Doesn't matter. The zip back catches the teleport from Virgil. No bar is built from Virgil there because you're in Devil Trigger. The meaty, oh my goodness, my friend, doing the disrespectful stuff. LT puts Dr. Doom away super hastily. And Strider just holds. It's over. It's over, man. Joe Wadi down, unless there's a drop here, but I don't think we're used to seeing LT drop. And DXP letting this match get away. You have to respect Spencer. Anchor Spencer is still very, very strong as LT gets away with this one. Can DXP reverse 3-0 just like LT did at EVO? Is, is this a payback? Is this, you know, historical symmetry here? Or is this just a, a bus ass scenario? Oh, We're about to find out, KP. I hate that for DXP because we hit with the cheap stuff. We got the raw tag overhead and it hit, but no conversion. So Nova gets away, but very low on HP, doesn't matter. Something else that LT is amazing at using is that life bar mechanic that Nova has. Spinning the red life to get the extra properties on the fireball inputs. Great air throw, that was so low to the ground for DXP, knowing that the overhead could have been an option there and was ready for it. Fighting for space and a dead Nova, well done. And tags in Dr. Doom for the mix here. Okay, I do like Dr. Doom against Spencer. It's a hard matchup because Spencer can't really cover the foot dive angle, but the XP just going straight to where Spencer was. I think a little bit of passiveness wouldn't have been a bad idea here. And goes for the snap once, nothing to do with the strider and goes for the cross up there. Uh, LT with the nice command grab as well. Just so much pressure over and over. You cannot let a player like LT get momentum. However, Virgil's tagging in and Virgil does have the option of swinging and the, the worst thing you can do to a player with a very invincible reversal is swing but sometimes it's the most effective because they will not see it coming let's see what sort of setup does lt have ready here KP. yeah choosing to go for the the, the mundane classic that was so fu that was so five head what what excuse me oh my goodness. on every level that was nonsense but it doesn't matter it goes in lt's favor Whoa, DXP with the perfectly timed grab punish, but not able to follow up. I like this, at least we're ready for the punish on Bionic Arm, we get the jump. That's gonna give us the full confirm. Ooh, and God goes for the him. Trying to lock down Doom with those missiles right there. No Santa Claus for LT, and now this is a battle of Dooms. Oh my goodness, the missiles were there. No confirm from DXP Yo. and gets the instant overhead right after. DXP is still in the mix. All you have to do is make sure that this level three kills. Do you spend it right now? Goes for the optimization, waits a little bit. You have to wait for the ground bounce there. Otherwise, it pops out sometimes randomly. And somehow, DXP is still in the game after the most chaotic command grab I have ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Yeah. Will DXP bring this one back, KP? I want to see it. I want to see a game four i definitely think that or excuse me a game five i definitely think that dxp got caught on the back foot to start it off we already talked about enough how momentum is going to set so much of the pace for this matchup i think you spin the bar 100 percent get him out of here 
This is what it looks like when DXP is in control. You're staying nose to nose with them. Virgil, chest to chest the entire time. Forcing the back foot with assist calls and confirming, cleaning our plate. This is what it looks like when DXP is playing up to their potential. Absolutely. And there was an interesting interaction right there. You saw Spencer got a, a miss input, and that's because the read was oh. on the teleport. And oh my goodness, DXP just swinging as a defense. I'm telling you, when you give a player like this momentum and you start doing questionable things, they don't become questionable anymore. They're very big brain. Let's see what happens here. Just going to go for the round trip after. Very, very wise. It wants nothing to do with the Doctor Doom pressure. And now LT is going to have to bring this one out of the bag. I don't think LT is used to being with solo Doom very often, so this might be a weak spot against uh, his strategy right here, especially as DXP gets the teleport. Very, very nice. Will this be enough? You do get a tag onto Dr. Doom here, but DXP just opting to build the meter instead. Very wise, optimal stuff, and this could be the end of the Liberian Dictator KP. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was tense. Uh, something that DXP is known for is definitely their aggression, their aggro style, limiting your options, smothering you. But they can also play really lame with the Virgil and are pretty much automatic with the round trip glitch. So they can lame it out as well, just like they showed against the Doctor Doom there. Really played that matchup out. But now tied up 2-2, two to two, Liberal Terminator opens it up with a quick Nova combo. This is going to be a dead Virgil and a positively dastardly mix-up. For Dr. Doom, we've already seen this be successful a few times. Which way is LT going to take it this time? Well, goes for the optimal piercer right there. Almost messed that up. And DXP, once again, not Yo. a free swing. This is the type of gameplay that gets games on even the best players. You're like, Daigo's not going to wake up, DP. Yes, he is. And that's precisely what DXP is doing right now. This should be a dead Nova. And Dr. Doom has to hold a mix of no invincible options like Spencer. And Doom Strider is just such a nightmare scenario. But <laughs> Liberal Terminator fights it out. This is going down to the wire. Abajo del cable, KP. Uh, okay. Yeah. Disrespect from both sides. I'm liking what I'm seeing. They're paying attention. They're fighting out. But Strider is the most powerful character, I would say, left of uh, these three with X Factor. So LT wants to beat this character on the incoming mix-up. Do not let them escape. Don't give them a chance to play. Ooh, get a chance. This is not good. The XP needs to land this combo. Goes for the loops. This might let Spencer land, but no, no block from LT there. Are we going to see bombs, tigers, bears? LT in a little bit of trouble. The XP looking strong, but the scoop right there is going to go down to where I believe Bajra is a punish. Goes for the trade. Not enough. And the missile saving Strider once more gets in through the chimney. This could go either way. One meter on deck, just trying to ice out this X Factor on both sides now. And that, the missiles are dangerous because you do have the satellite. You could even get the full screen gram i think it's called the just a giant sword slash and now lt is betting his life on this mix up this is going to chip out a lot but not enough oh my goodness this is so close this is so close you're kidding me you're kidding me oh my goodness close as you possibly could from being eliminated that the oh my that last 30 second sprint when the x factor was fading on both players I'm still shocked that LT was able to make that comeback. You know, there's a lot of tech with the Spencer. It's not always just like, kind of like how I was when I played the character. I was mostly just flailing with my air button trying to get hits. But definitely you gotta watch out for that Phoenix right assist. Some super approach angles, or super annoying approach angles for Spencer using that assist. Uh, to the max choosing to play kind of passively at the start though. And Spencer able to piece him apart and get things started early. And an extra dimension that uh, Spencer gets with the Phoenix Red Assist is that Missile is just a running hitbox that hits low. So that often leads to very uncomfortable scenarios and random unblockables from Aeonian side. And we're going to have to see a very dirty setup here because we know that to the Max is Nova is particularly scary. As Hulk is out of the picture, oh my oh, god, we block. did watch the Twitter video, but you have to hold the mix right after as well. And Nova should be one and done here with Spencer's non-existent scaling KP. Yeah, uh, we have to mention, of course, that Missile also gives us an OTG. So, <laughs> yeah, another exp another extension for Spencer to put these characters away. Ooh, the Plasma Beam actually messes it up for us there. And the Raw Hyper Sentinel Force is going to be massive. We get two characters for one. 
Oh my goodness. Put him away. That is a massive reversal of fortune. Now, jumping H. That was so risky, but I like the block from Aeonia. We were ready. And you know, KP, sometimes when you play the fishing minigame, it's Shark Week. And this is what happens. Tuda Max just smelled blood and went in for the kill. Aeonian was so dominant throughout the set. We were talking wonders about the Spencer, but it just didn't pay off in that particular scenario, trying to escape the Hulk. And now that Tuda Max has a little bit of, you know, fear factor put into Aeonian, the matchup could change very, very dramatically. Let's see what happens here. No. Oh, goes for the TK Bomber. Uh, doesn't quite pay off, and those drones right there really get mitigated by the Plasma Beam and Missile Assist. But you have to be careful when you call them, because you could get boo booed and Dr. Doom is bleeding. Dash up arm is a very real option. Max recognizes it and stops the punish. Drones are there to give us an actual combo. That's one of those situations where the drones interrupting the character actually works against you. Aeonian able to close out the hole. The incoming just jump light. It's so ambiguous. Great choice from Aeonian. Aeonian. And with the extension, perfect. Chef's kiss. Put him away. I like what we're seeing from Aeonian right now. And what's beautiful about this is that you do get a tag uh, into Maya Super and you get more time to just gather evidence. And Phoenix Red against Sentinel is a matchup horrendous, but oh. not if you just grab the lawyer. He's, he's just a human, you know? What is he going to do against a machine made to kill the evolution of humans? If it kills Charizard, What's Charmander doing in this scenario? Let's see what happens oh, here. Oh, what a scoop to the max looking great. KP is down to Doom once more. I said I like what I was seeing from Aeonian. I like what I'm seeing from Tuda Max even more. Ruthless decision making. Absolutely going for the throat there. Beautiful job. Tuda Max closing it out, going 2 0 now. Aeonian's got their back against the wall. We gotta clutch this out. Dig deep. Oh boy. Just disrespects at the start from Tudamax. Weird conversion. Had to go for a TAC. Aeonian breaks out at least. Oh my lord. And you know the Spencer has just been putting in so much work, but it's about the Sentinel. And I have a philosophy against Sentinel is that if you just don't do anything, it just kind of explodes. But Aeonian has been just proposing a little bit too hard and it's been biting him in the back. Let's see what happens here at the third try of the Spencer steamroll. Uh, we're probably going for the mix up here in Nova because that is not a pleasant matchup. Messes up the blink and goes for the cross up oh. jab. Beautiful oh. stuff and staggers it just enough to put Tuda Max in an uncomfortable scenario. Goes for the overhead, just fighting it out of the corner and up backs everywhere. Nova's nowhere to be seen. And once again, Phoenix Wright is going to tag in here against Sentinel or maybe just keep in Spencer for the team super. KP. This Sentinel is so scary to fight against. Yeah, we were hating on Sentinel earlier and saying when Ray Ray was playing that it doesn't matter if you're the best Sentinel in the world, it's still Sentinel. Um, I don't think Tudamax heard that. What? Did we actually block that? Okay, no way. That was an unblockable no setup with Missile. You have to jump out of it. That was psycho. That's what I'm talking about with the tech, man. Aeonian is ready. If you're definitely just expecting the regular old, like, Spencer gameplay, no, nah, he's gonna hit you with some cheeky stuff that he has lab down. And this is the first time that Tudamax has one neutral at the beginning of the match. And this could cost the Onion, but somehow Spencer escapes. No confirm off that Plasma Beam, and this could be crucial. Landing in there, and the Command Grab zoning from Hulk. Very, very interesting stuff. Missile tagging in, and you just see the careful gameplay right now from both of these players. They don't want to commit. Nice, patient stuff, and that grab could change everything. But their baby drone, just enough to seal the deal. And no Plasma Beam confirmed once again. We might see a Bionic Arm into Phoenix Wright DHC. Just to try and play a little bit more passive, Plasma Beam gets two evidences. And now this is rough. The papers are being asked for right now. This Hulk might be, uh, you know, from, oh. from a different region. That, that's why he's dressing funny. Let's see what happens. I want, I want to say that... Oh, I was going to say, okay. I was going to say, with, with two to max at the life bar he was at, we don't tag out Hulk, but it was definitely starting to bleed and we actually lose the Hulk. And now the objection lands on the Nova. So we are in full turnabout mode. We're not going to spend any meter on this. It's so much damage. I think Sino's got to hold this. Yeah, we get the hard drive out, but yeah. Oh, my goodness. oh a rare drop? We dropped the third. 
Are you kidding me? What is that? The, he hits him with stand medium from behind. And the juggle kills Phoenix right. X Factor is pop for Sentinel. We have all the momentum that we needed. Oh, the jump my back Lord. heavy, man. Oh, my goodness. A different timing right there. Dr. Doom trying to escape. X Factor right there. Do you get a grab? You should. Oh, but no, doesn't jump to grab. Sudamax doesn't have meters. Things are so crazy. This could go either way. Aeonian looking a little bit scared, pressing a little bit too many buttons and gets the Scoopy Doo to tie things up two to two unless a miracle happens right now, KP. But I don't even know what to say. What a tense set. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say either. You, you, you said it best, man. This is speechless stuff at this point. They're just. They're in that moment, you know what I'm saying? That li that last life bar moment. Things are getting a little weird. You're doing what comes natural, maybe not what comes best. That's fine. Oh, that, that is so cheap! That is so cheap! He absolutely has to hold that. Hulk just gets hit again. We spin the bar. I like it. Don't play with our food, man. You have to to go for the raw tag or the jump in that scenario. Otherwise, you just get waxed a little bit. And the cross up jab once more. It really comes down to Tuda Max's Sentinel against Aeonian's entire team. Let's see if there's an answer to the unblockable here. Gonna go for it again okay. and goes for the arm just to cover for that option. Very intelligent stuff. Gets the optimal hit on oh, Sentinel. Oh. We haven't seen real Nova in? yet. We haven't seen Nova yet, KB, but we have to see it now if Tuda Max wants to stay in this. There we go. Yep. This is the party starter, baby. Nova gets the back throw into the corner. All that X Factor on deck. Spin one meter, kill this character super quick. What's the incoming gonna be? Oh, oh, my, right. lord. It's hit. oh my lord! Maya. Maya's so broken. Maya's best character in Marvel 3. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Yo, he gets the pickup off of that! It was a projectile, so he ran away. Let's see what happens here. Oh my lord, goes for the overhead once more. Tuda Max is not gonna be able to kill right here, but it's gonna be close. And no, the reset of Kaiba. Tuda Max is probably the no, scariest player in X Factor throughout this whole tournament. No, he didn't. He hit him with a double touchdown combo, and when it reset the second time, he already had the slide coming out. I believe Whataburger to be the best burger in the United States out of all the fast food chains. It is that's, good. That's my take. That's my take. It's good. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. I'll go ahead and say that it was a beautiful experience for you. I got to take Cane Blue River to a Wendy's. So I got to feed him a Baconator. Uh, that's about as close as I'll ever get to that. But Iron Fist versus Deadpool. On paper, Deadpool definitely wins this. I'm not sure that Weberman cares. Yeah, matchups are only real if you care about them. Like, oh, you just like played Mario the number earlier. three power ranked player in the world. Well, what what is a power rank? You know, sometimes you just dash up M, five check the Deadpool, and send Beeman back to hosting Jeopardy right now because Weberman is looking <laughs> really really strong. Oh my God! Yeah, the Iron Fist he just closes distance so quickly. That's definitely the. We've talked about the weaknesses of Iron Fist for sure, but the strength is the, is the ground dash and how fast he can, he can close that distance. But B-Man gets a crucial back throw into the corner, a little combo to start things off. We have to lock this character down, man. Dude, the team super is so cheap. Underrated option from Weeperman's team as well. He goes ahead and chooses to spin the X-Factor on the Dante. If we get this clean kill, we're gonna have a nice incoming mix-up on Hawkeye. What's it gonna be? Keeps it meaty. Oh. And the Akuma there to bait out an uncomfortable push block. Now Weaverman is just playing his game, optimal stuff with the Iron Fist. I think we're about to see the DHC into the double super right here. Uh, yes, it is a Tatsumaki into Akuma. And this just gets maximum damage because of the side switch. Very, very creative stuff from Weaverman. Maxing out the team in, in a way that only a true master, only someone who's played cool. this team for years could do. And just standing there at the beginning of the match, B-Man with a more aggressive proposal at the beginning. Yeah, unfortunate for B-Man that the assist call actually scuffed the combo, so they weren't able to get the traditional Deadpool follow-up off of that. But back into neutral is not a bad situation for him. He should have all the options and all the tools to lock this down and put a lot of pressure on that Iron Fist life bar. Until we get the two meters, there's not really a full screen option for Iron Fist here. Yeah, it's rough. Sometimes... Iron Fist option is just 
close your eyes and dash at them, hope nothing bad happens. But sometimes you just run into a man with a gun and now Deadpool with the mix right here. Beautiful stuff on B-Man's side. Ryu not going to mm. be dead to this unless the infinite is completed, nah. but it is really hard because Ryu is a high health character, giving Weaverman an opportunity to maybe fight it out of out of the corner, especially using that Tatsu assist and the angle changes that you get with Ryu's very own Tatsu himself, KP. Yeah, it's it's interesting to watch Ryu play neutral in this game because he is so like <laughs> ordinary in his options. B-Man with a perfect time to hammer there, but not able to follow up on both characters. That's super unfortunate. He could have put it away right then and there. But yeah, it's a lot of jumping forward. It's a lot of really clean dashing. And we got Dingin mode, baby. We got the sweep, but nothing to follow it up. Uppercut? No, we're not going to get that out. Nicely done for B-Man. He was already in the recovery of the light kick. That's why it was a, a tricky uh, cancel right there. Let's see what happens here. Uh, Weaver Man trying to make this Akuma comeback happen, but B Man just abusing the fact that there's no super to threaten from Akuma's side and just going for this gunshot game, just very, very passive stuff. Throws out the grenade, baits out the super, throws out another grenade, covers the space, and the Tatsu is just enough. Oh. Get the cross uh, the cross up right here, but just not capitalizing and the X Factor cancel into grab. Very interesting option right here from B Man, but paying off, he said. Uh, this is a guessing game, but it's not Jeopardy. You have to hold this mix right here. Great round from B-Man. This is that's the sweaty stuff. That's the reason why you play this team. There's so much potential in it for uh, kind of checkmate situations like that. Well done for B-Man in an early combo on Weaver Man's Iron Fist. We have to reset because we didn't quite build the resources. But even then, so much damage dumped in on that Iron Fist Light Bar. And you know he's going to have to milk a little bit more. He actually tags into Ryu. I think that's a pretty good decision at this point. Let's see what happens here. We do see the Hadoukens to try and nullify the bullets. Hadouken is a surprisingly durable mm. projectile right here. As he's getting chased down in the corner, tries to fight it out. Calling Hawkeye smartly to punish the assist on Weaverman's side. And now Weaverman possibly getting a birthday, but Iron Fist being second doesn't quite allow for the complete punish. And we might see oh. a DC right now, but the DP was <laughs> crucial right there in order to vibe check that will and force the meter to just be spent in an uncomfortable scenario. We might see the DAC, no, just the raw tag, and things could get dicey here for both of these players. I, this five seconds determines how the rest of the match goes. Now, mm -hmm. Great net arrow situation from B-Man. I really like going for the full optimal juggle as well. Resources matter so much right now. That's your main resource, that's your main advantage over Weberman, Weberman right now, is you have four meters, and Weberman's working with barely two. And with a kill here, we go massively into the lead. Akuma has so much work that they have to do to get back into this game. Yep, and I do believe we get a 50-50 off jam session with this. Mm. Gets the kid, goes for the X immediately after, and B-Man showing why he's one of the best Deadpool players on the planet and why this team is so strong. It's been uh, two players playing this particular team in general tonight, and, and they've both shown us the strength of Deadpool, Dante, Hawkeye. Just so much projectiles, so much mix, so much situational awareness. And Weaverman is going to have to bully his way through, just cause a chaotic scenario in order to get the hit with Iron Fist and force B-Man to promise at the beginning of this match, KP, but sometimes the cookie crumbles the other way around. Well, the Deadpool is so good at leaving threats in neutral at that, you know, normal dash, normal jump height, especially the grenade, and he separates himself, right? So he can be away from the, the problems that he's creating. That's why it makes it so difficult for Iron Fist to approach. He's not just attacking one problem. He's got to get through to the follow-up situation, and Deadpool's already moving on to the next pattern. And it's kind of the same way with Ryu. I mean, Ryu can choose to dump, you know, some beams here and there, but he's mostly got to hold this. This is a good start, putting in, you know, 60-70% damage on Dante. Oh, the X-Factor? No, we don't catch him, though. Dante gets out. That's massively unfortunate, and we remain forces out the level 2 X-Factor. That is not it. And gets the punish on Akuma as well. This could be a dead Akuma because Akuma is made out of oh, wet tissue. Bro. Let's see what happens here. Akuma's gone off that one uh, greedy confirm right there. Now Hawkeye tagging in this matchup bad against Ryu. I've seen comebacks like these happen though. I am not putting Weaverman out of the picture, especially if you call an unsafe assist uh. like that. But B-Man has to clean up the zoning patterns, has to make it perfectly. Otherwise, Weaverman is content Ooh. with these trades. Ooh. It could happen, KP. Yo. 
Dungeon mode? Are you kidding me? I've seen two dungeon modes that set. I love that from Weberman, but this is still matchup disastrous. Hawkeye putting all the arrows on the screen, forcing Ryu to hold this chip damage, and I think that's going to end our set. 3-1, B-Man advances over Weberman. Wow.